Hi everyone, my name is Matt. Today we're going to go over how to make hip implant. You can see I have the full model over here. Today we're going to go over the first two features. As you can see on the left, I'm just going to scroll this up to the first feature. So you see that. And what we're going to do is actually go to this paper over here. Click on part. Click OK. And all my measurements are going to be in millimeters. You can check that on the bottom right over here. You get you can change it to IPS, which is inch pound second. I'm, I'm going to be in MMGS, millimeter gram second. Now I'm going to just switch over to my tab so I see what I've, I've done. I'm just hitting control tab to like switch through files. I'm going to right click on the sketch. You can also right click on the box tree too and just click on edit sketch. So these are all the measurements. Feel free to pause the video and try it for yourself, but we'll be going over it. So now I'm going to my blank file. First off, I'm going to hit Control S to save it. You can also click on the floppy disk. I'm just going to type in hip, hip implant 2, just because I already have one. Now I'm going to right click the front plane and click on sketch. You want to make sure that you're in a regular sketch and not a 3D sketch. You can tell right over here, it will say 3D. If it is 3D, exit out of the sketch, and then delete it and try it again. All right, so first off, we're going to make a center line. I'm going to go hover my mouse over the sketch bar over here, center line. I'm going to go to the origin, which you can see that my cursor has a yellow box. So that's to show that it attaches to the origin. You can see if I move away, there's no yellow box. If I go here, there's a yellow box. doesn't really matter where you put it. All you want is that vertical relation, which you will see another yellow box. I'm going to press escape. I don't remember what the dimension is, so I'm just going to go back to it. So we have this as 140, and then we'll probably we'll make the next two lines, this line over here, the 100, and then the slanted line with the 165 degrees. So going back, I'm going to click on the Smart Dimension tool on the Sketch tab, and I'm going to make it 120. Just click on the line, move it to the side, and type 120, enter. Next up, I'm going to make a line. This is going to be a regular line, not a center line, so I'm just going to click this box. Go over here, you see the dotted, I'll zoom in, you see a dotted line. That shows that you're horizontal to the origin. My box is actually white, which means that it won't create the relation. This is just a show as a reference. I'm going to click it, go to any side, doesn't really matter, and then click to attach it here. You see another yellow box. I'm going to press escape to get out of it. And I'm going to click on Smart Dimension Tool. I'm going to click on this point over here. And we're going to click on this because we're going to set the distance of it. Actually, before we do that, we, we should uh, do dimension the line first. So I'm going to press Escape. Going to do this line. So just make sure it's parallel. You don't want it vertical like this. You want it parallel to the line. I'm going to make this 100. You see, if I drag this blue line, it will go anywhere. So what we're going to do is make a horizontal relation. So you're going to go to your display, delete relations, click on the down arrow, add relation. It's because my point was highlighted, it's selected on the box already. So I'm going to click on this point, and I'll click on horizontal. An easier way to do this is to actually click on this point, hold control, click on the origin point, let go, and then this will pop up on the box. If it ever goes away, as long as you know where it is, you can hover back to it and press control, and it comes right back up. So now if we try to move this point, you see that it can't go up anymore or down. So we're going to dimension the, the angle to 165. So click on the two lines with the small dimension tool and put 165. It looks a little bit weird just because you still still move it. So we're gonna do another smart dimension. I'm clicking on this point. Make sure you click on the point and the whole the center line. And now you see if you go this, this is basically the radius of it because in the in the picture this is actually an arc. So this is the radius. You go here for the diameter. I'm gonna go here for the diameter just to show you 
this is just to show that different ways that SOLIDWORKS works. I'm going to hit 6 and then enter. You can see that this is just from here to here. If you go from here to the origin and you're going down, you can put it as 3. It's going to be the same thing. You see that my lines turn black. That means it's fully defined. I'm going to make my units look a little bit neater. And then next up, we're going to make another line. So I'm going to go to, to the line tool. I'm, I'm zooming in with my middle, with the scroll wheel on the mouse. I'm going to click here, another relation. Go to the side, make sure it's horizontal. I'm going to press escape. And I'm going to mention it to be 5 millimeters. I believe the next one's the other arc, but I don't remember, so I'm going to control tab to see what I did. So the next one is a line, a 27 millimeter dash line, and a 120 millimeter height of a three point arc. So going back to the model, I'm going to click on line, click on this point at the end, click here. I'm going to press escape, go to the three point arc, which is you can find on the sketch tab over here. Click on this point, and then I'm just going to make it look like horizontal to the origin. So I'm going to click, I'm going to move it to the left, click again, I'm going to escape to get out of it, and I'm going to my smart dimension tool. I'm going to make this 27, so I want it to be parallel to the line. If you ever find that you keep going this way or that way, once you get this found, you can do the right mouse button, click on the mouse, right mouse button, and then it will stay in that position to lock it in place. I'm going to click this, 22, I'm 27, sorry. And then, I believe this is 140, uh, 120 over here and a 140 over here. So I made a mistake on my dimension. This is actually supposed to be 140, so I'm just going to double click this and just put 140. Now I'm going to go to the smart dimension, click on this point and this point, I'm going to make this 120. You can see that it's not horizontal to the origin. I can move it up and down wherever it goes. So we're going to create another add relation. Go here. Click on add relation, click on two points, and click on horizontal. But I'm just going to click on this point, hold control, click on this point, let go, and then this pops up. So I'm just put horizontal. The next dimension is, is the radius of this arc. So I'm going to go over here, move it to the side, and put 300. You can see that the distance, I'm press escape, you can see that. It move it all the side, that's okay. You just drag the point and move it to the side. We're going to dimension this with this point to be six. So I'm going to hit small dimension, click on this point, click on this point, and we're going to make this six. So all the lines are fully defined right now. Now we're going to make another three point arc over here. You can also if you click on this, it will use your previous setting. But if you find that one, the boxes in the highlighted one you want, you can hover over it and see which one. And you can press A to toggle through it. So I'm going to click on this point with, for a three point arc selected. Click on this point and then move it down. Press escape a couple times to get rid of it. I'm going to mention this arc to be three millimeters in radius. I'm going to press escape, and you see that now the whole sketch is fully defined. Now we're going to go to the features tab, hit extruded boss slash base. We want this direction to be mid plane, just so everything is symmetrical. And we're going to make this 5 millimeters. I'm just going to press check, and that's the first feature. Going to the next sketch, I'm going to just Control tab, exit out of the sketch. I'm going to scroll this down and click here, edit sketch. Again, feel free to pause the video and try it for yourself, but I'll be going over it. 
So I'm going to click this face and then go over here and click sketch. I have the setting set and so that it automatically goes normal to the plane. But if, it, if it's at an angle for you, just click control eight. That will make, a no, make it normal to that face. Again, let's say I'm out of this model, control eight, move it to the face. Also, if you zoom in and out and you can't find your model anymore, what you can do is plus F and it goes right back to the model to fit it onto the screen. So we're gonna hit, I'm gonna click out of side, make sure I'm not selecting anything. Click offset entities. I'm gonna zoom in. I wanna hit this, this sketch. So you can see my cursor changes. You can see there's a square right now next to my cursor. If I go to the edge, it will turn into a line which shows I'm selecting the edge, which is what I want. So I'm gonna set it to two millimeters. Reverse it, this is, shows a preview of how it would look. So I'm gonna reverse. That's the way I want it, I'm gonna press check. And I'm gonna make a center line. Over here. If you hover over the arc, you can see the point over here. This is waking up the point. So I have a yellow box because I wanna make it relation to that point. Click on this. I'm gonna scroll above the origin, click on that. I'm gonna press escape. I'm gonna go to my next, I'm gonna do control tab to go to my other sketch just so I know what the size is. So it's 117 here. And then we have a 115 straight line over here. So I'm gonna do smart dimension, go into my sketch tab, smart dimension, go click on the line and 117. Now I'm gonna make a line connected to this point over here, making sure it is vertical. Click on that. A quick way to get to Smart Dimension is instead of clicking over here, you can press the S key, this is your shortcuts tab. If you don't have it, you can customize it by right clicking this, customize, and then you go to shortcut bar, and you can add it in. So for me, I have my shortcut over here, so I'm just gonna hit S, click on Smart Dimension, and make this 115. I'm gonna zoom out and then zoom into the top. I'm gonna make a line. You could hit this over here or you just press L for line. Click on this point, connect to this point. Hit escape to get out of it. So instead of making the other two lines the same way because it's symmetrical, I'm just gonna mirror it. An easy way to mirror, use a mirror function is to make a box, click on, on your left button on your mouse and drag it to the left. You see it's a green text box and when you let go, it highlights the whole thing. It doesn't work if you go left to right. For instance, if you go like this, it will only highlight the ones that actually is fully in the box. So for that, only this line be highlighted. So we're gonna make the green box by left clicking the mouse, drag to the left and then let go. And then we're gonna go to the mirror. mirror we're gonna do mirror entities over here and just click it and it just fits it right to it. And that's it for the second sketch. So I'm gonna go to the features tool, do extruded cut, and I'm gonna make it one millimeter. And press one, enter, and done. You could rotate the model to see how it will look, because it'll show a preview. Check. And thus the first two, two features. In the next video, I'll go over all these other box extrudes Evolve in the fillets where we're using a mirror function. Yep. Hope this video makes sense and it's easy to follow. And I'll see you and I'll see you all in the next video.